Good morning. morning. Our memory verse for this month, Acts 4, 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Today we're going to be in Luke chapter 2. If you want to turn in your Bibles, we'll be in Luke chapter 2 and we're going to look at uh, a day or a few days in the life of Jesus, a couple different times of his childhood. We don't have much on Jesus' childhood, but we'll look at a little bit of that today. And I want to uh, remind you of an opportunity that we have next Sunday. Easter is a unique day uh, for us. Many people don't realize that Jesus, you know, Easter is a man made uh, religious holiday. Jesus did not institute. Easter, and Scripture doesn't speak about it, Um, Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, and that's really the only uh, regular observation that would be even close to a holiday, but that's a weekly time that we just observed, and we stop and remember Jesus dying for us on the cross, uh, being buried and, and risen again. But next Sunday... In our society, it's very common for people who are not faithful in church to feel a tug toward going to church. And we can, we can talk about how good or bad that is, but here's what I think, if you can uh, allow me. If someone wants to cur- come to church on a Sunday, let them come. And if, and if people are, um, because people do feel some draw to get closer to God or do what they need to do, and they do this time of year, and they do on Easter for whatever reasons. And I want them to be here, and I hope you do. And so I encourage you, you have friends and neighbors and family, don't be surprised that if you ask them, uh, do you have a, a church home that you're going to this next Sunday? They may say no, but you know, I've been thinking about it. Invite them. Tell them, come with me. Come with me, and you can sit by me. Tell them you'll even have a a seat, an aisle seat. You know we increased our aisle seats here. Did y'all notice that? We have more aisle seats. Tell them you can sit by me, and we'll sit on the aisle if you need to get out. Go to the restroom. Anyway, invite them. Invite them. I I hope we uh, have more, and I hope that's a first step for people. If that's their first step back toward God, or toward God to begin with, let it be. Uh, So be praying about that. Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 39 is where we'll pick up. And this is uh, Jesus, his parents, Mary and Joseph, had taken him to the temple. They had done what the law required, circumcised on the eighth day. There were other things involving purification, dedication. They did those things. And in verse 39, it says, When they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, Nazareth, And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and favor with, and the favor of God was upon him. Jesus grew like every godly parent wants their child to grow. And if you have children or grandchildren, this is what you want for them. We want them to grow. In wisdom, not just knowledge, it's one thing to know things, it's another thing to have wisdom to make good choices. We want our children to grow up and be wise, and make wise choices. We also want them to grow in the favor of God. And that happened with Jesus. The favor of God was upon him. And mostly, we would have to say that happened at home. As Jesus grew up, his spiritual upbringing, his walk with God... What, what is said that happened here, filled with wisdom and favor of God, was upon him. Now, Jesus is God's son, and he's God, and there's that as well. But him growing up, it was he grew up in a godly home. And I, I want to remind us, parents or grandparents, you, you may have grandchildren in the home, but parents mostly, our kids' spiritual upbringing will be at home. It won't be here because they're mostly at home. And home is their primary influence. And I want to remind us uh, the value of doing family devotionals at home. And they don't have to be what we provide. That's just a tool. 
But if you're not doing family devotionals at home, I want to encourage you to do them. And if it's awkward, do them until it's not. Do them. Stop and pray with your family. Uh, stop and open the Word of God with your family. At home, because that's where our children are most influenced. Verse 41 says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. So he was an infant. <clears throat> now he's 12. We don't have anything in between. But he's 12 now. And this is a unique day when they went to the temple. This is a yearly religious holiday of the Jews according to the law of Moses. Jesus being 12 would be at an age where he's, he's not entering adulthood, but he's entering the years of training to be an adult. And it's the same for us. Uh, the teenage years, years of adolescence, a, a, a young person is between being a child and being an adult. And they're really neither entirely. But they're training to be adults. And that's how we should look at it. And that's how Jesus' parents no doubt looked at it. And I want to brag on our youth program for just a minute. And I want to uh, uh, point out a few things of, of what we do as a church or what's happening. And I want to start with Matt Post. And... I know <clears throat> it's awkward. Um, are we on speaking terms, by the way? I haven't talked to Matt since an incident that happened uh, when he returned from his trip, uh, honeymoon with his wife, new bride, and the, the teens might have, might have talked me into it. Uh, we pranked his office. They pranked his office. I supervised. It was a whole thing. It got out of control. And so we haven't spoken since then. <clears throat> but, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, I know a talk is coming. A talk is coming. But um, I love this, the work that Matt does, and I appreciate him, and I want you to um, appreciate him and pray for him as he serves as our youth and family minister. Matt is very talented. He works very hard. Um, one thing that I love about him is he does not care who gets the credit and and what a great quality and, and I want to encourage all of us as we serve God because the greatest thing someone could ever accuse you of is being a humble servant of God as you serve God do it without caring who gets the credit Amen. it's a wonderful thing uh, but we appreciate you Matt and your service to um, in this congregation and your service to God I want to brag on um, Richard and Melissa Prater, who have served with our young people in, uh, during small group time. They did that. They've done that for over a year and a half now um, when we were searching for uh, a youth minister and have continued. And so just the, the restructuring of our youth program, trying to have more parental involvement and more adults involved and greater connections, all those things are, uh, are absolutely happening and they're beautiful to watch. So when our young people, for example, they're in cl classes, kind of the cornerstone of our youth program. But when our teens and preteens are in class, Matt teaches them a lot. Curtis Price teaches. Steve Hess teaches. We have others who teach our young people, our teens, um, and they do a great job. And that, that's kind of a pillar of what's going on with them. But they also, our young people meet in small group. They meet for Monday night for the master. They have different service projects and opportunities. They have guys' nights, girls' nights area-wides, lock-ins, all types of things going on. And meanwhile, they're growing closer to God and they're growing closer to each other. And they're doing that during these years where they're training to be adults. And I want to brag on our parents who have been involved with the youth program and, our, and other adults who have stepped forward and participated. One of, the, one of the most wonderful things I see, and you'll see it if you'll watch, Watch our teens and preteens, and you'll see they, they're not just connected with their youth minister or they're not just with their parents, but you'll see them talking to other adults here, other parents, and that's what we wanted. That's what we set out to do. That's one of, one of the important things that we prayed about. And so for our kids to be growing in wisdom and the favor of God, that's what we want. Keep praying about it. Keep helping as you can. So Jesus... Well, he stays at the temple. His parents leave and probably with others of their family and they traveled 
um, and they and they stopped, and he wasn't there, and they can't find him, and so they have to go back. And verse forty six says, after three days, after three days, they found him in the temple. Now that's panic, by the way. I have uh, kind of night terror type things that uh, I wake up, and these are the kind of night terrors I have. That it's been three days, you know, like Noah was my responsibility. He's four, and it's been three days since I've had, you know, I don't know where he is. That kind of thing is how I wake up. But Mary and Joseph, you can only imagine, after three days, they find him in the temple sitting among the teachers. Look at what he's doing listening and asking questions. Listening and asking questions. When, um, well, this weekend is LTC, if you didn't know. This weekend is LTC in Norman. And looking forward to that. And I want to talk about that a little bit. But when I come up here on Sunday afternoons, um, these are just some pictures of some of what's going on with LTC. But when, I, I, you know, I'll go home and eat today. And I will come back and... When I come in, drama practice is going on, puppet practice. One of them's wrapping up. One of them's about to start. Kids are everywhere. Coaches are working with them. It's your, I know you're home taking a nap, but you need to know that some really, really good things are happening with our young people right now. Uh, just in this time of year with LTC. We have, there are 12 different things our young people are involved in uh, with Leadership Training for Christ, Scrapbook, Bible Reading Extemporaneous, Bible Reading, Teaching Challenge, Art. There are Kids are bringing their art today. I saw some of their art that they brought in to Yvette's office. Uh, it's amazing. Our kids have take, sat down, taken time, and created something about the life of Moses. Chorus, Bible Application, Puppets, Drama, Scripture Memorization, Service Groups, and Bulletin Board. We've had a bulletin board out here. You've seen, may not have thought much about it, but Presley Foote made that. It's about the life of Moses. Um, it's a wonderful thing what our kids are doing with LTC. And I want to brag on our young people because no one's making them. I don't think anyone's making them do any of these. And they do them. And they work. That might be a tad stretch. I saw some looks. No, listen, I know what you, I know what you young people get by with. No one's making you do it. Um, and they do it and they love it and they're learning. And we have, so to back up here, we have teachers and we have young people who are listening and they're asking questions and it's a wonderful thing. And regarding our classes for our children here, Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, Stephanie Price makes sure every Sunday Every Wednesday, we have every class ready to go with the teacher. Oftentimes, she steps in to sub. But I want to brag on our teachers and those who've helped them and, and include Bible Hour for a minute. If in the past 12 months, you have helped teach a kid's class from age from 12th grade on down to babies, if you have taught or helped in class in the past 12 months or Bible Hour, would you stand just for a minute? If you have taught or helped in class or Bible hour in the last 12 months, thank you. Because it, it requires you giving of yourself. And it is an act of service. And when you have, we can have young people, they come and they're ready to listen and they're ready to ask questions. We have to have teachers. And teachers are a wonderful thing. Um, I, I can't think of anything more important than what our teachers do. I want to, um, and I want to brag on Kristen Tucker with Bible Hour and all the work that's involved in that. Every Sunday before I come up here, I, I get to watch these kids. They love to get out of this room, folks. They love to get out of here and get in there and be in Bible Hour. And that's why they're here, because that's for them. During this time, that's for their age, and they love it, and they're listening, and they're asking questions, and it's wonderful. And uh, I also want to tell parents, bring your kids to class. Bring your kids to class. I know it's not easy, but I know Monday through Friday, I'm pretty sure 
the jobs that we have, most of them require us to get up and get there before 930, which is when we start class Sunday mornings. We do that Monday through Friday, many, many of us. We get ourselves up, we get our kids up, get them ready, and get them where they need to go, dressed and ready. Uh, and I want to encourage you to do that on the Lord's Day on Sunday. And we also do that Wednesday night at 7. But I want to encourage you parents because oftentimes kids, kids want to go more than parents want to go. That's not uncommon. And maybe part of that is because of children's innocence. There's something about a child's innocence and God's goodness that draws the two together. And as we get older, as parents, we get distracted with the, the problems in life, the trials in our life, uh, just a variety of things that we are that pull us different ways. But parents, I want, I want to plug this. Make an effort. Make an effort to get up Sunday mornings and come to class. And get your kids to class, and then you go to class. We have a, by the way, we have a class designed. Richard Prater teaches it and leads our Growing Families ministry. We have a class for parents of kids that are growing up. And it's a great place, a great opportunity to talk about all those kind of challenges. Because we have many things we do in life, but tell me what's more important than raising your child in the grace and love of God. What's more important than that? All right, verse 47. All who heard him, this is Jesus, age 12. He's, he's listening and he's asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And coaches of uh, LTC and teachers in our classes, Sunday and Wednesday, it is a, you know what I'm talking about regarding this. It's a special thing when a young person answers and you're amazed at what they said. You're amazed that they understood it. Amanda Aldridge and I coach Bible application. We have 10 teens and preteens in Bible application. And we have to get them prepared so that when they are given a scenario, any scenario, they can take their Bible with no papers in it, their Bible, and they can find out of 50 chapters where it talks about Moses' life, they can find a scripture that applies to the scenario and tell you what they would do with it and tell you how they would help someone, what they would say to them, what they think might happen as a result. And our young people do that. And a man and I, sometimes one of our kids will say something and we will just look at each other like, did that, did they really say that? I didn't even think they knew what they, I didn't even think they knew we were working on Bible application. I didn't. Kids will amaze you. They will amaze you. And it's a wonderful thing to experience. Reading on in verse 49. He said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? You can imagine Jesus' parents. They, they got on to him. Why were you not with us? Why did you stay behind? He replies, did you not know this is what I was about? At age 12, Jesus is focused on his father's business, God's business, his eternal father. And he wanted to be closer to God. And so, parents, if your children have a stronger desire to be close to God than you, and that happens, it absolutely happens. Kids will be, sometimes this happens with VBS. We will gain a family to our congregation because their kid wanted to come to VBS. If your kid, if your child is more interested in coming to Bible class or church than you are, let that springboard you to where you again are leading. It, it, don't be discouraged by it. Be encouraged because it's a wonderful thing. If a child wants, wants time with God more than you, Brag on them. Compliment them. Don't get behind them and let them lead forever. Get in front of them. But let it springboard you um, and be an example. So verse 50, they didn't understand what he was saying. But what did Jesus do? He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And I want to tell children. Now most of today I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to adults. But young people, scripture... 
Uh, Ephesians 6 1 tells you to honor and obey your parents. And that's what Jesus does here. Even though Jesus was right, and there are going to be times that you might be right about something, but you still have to honor and respect. And Jesus shows a great example of us uh, for us. At the age of 12, he did that. And I also want to tell our young people, 1 Timothy 4.12 tells you, children, young people, young adults even, set an example for the older ones. If you see older ones who aren't doing right, you do right. Show them an example and pray for them. Let God work on their heart um, and still be respectful and submissive. Verse 52, this is a great verse. And this really kind of bookends the first scripture that talked about how Jesus was growing. But it says, Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. God and man. In that order. God first. And that goes all the way back to uh, Deuteronomy. We have a passage in, <clears throat> in Deuteronomy that talks about how we are to teach our children. And it starts out by saying, love the Lord, your God, all your heart, all your soul, all your might, love God first. We want our kids to grow up in favor with God first. I want them to be able to get along with other people. Yeah, that's in favor with man. I want people to think well of them and respect them. But above that, I want God to respect them. I want them to be in favor with God. That's above all. This scripture reminds us what to do. Love God first. And then verse 6. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently. Say it with me. You shall teach them diligently. Are you teaching your children diligently? If you have children at home. Grandparents, you have op opportunities with children, with your grandkids. Are, are you teaching them diligently? Could someone look at everything you do with your child and accuse you of teaching your children diligently? So we'll kind of close things down with, with this question. What kind of adults are we trying to raise our children to be? I'll give you four, four options, um, and the first three are, are fairly common. Champions in competition. And the idea here is, is I want my kid to be able to compete. I want them to, um, to know what it is to do your best, and be your best, and be the best. Champions in competition. Is that what I want to raise my child to be as an adult? An adult who knows how to compete and knows, who ha knows how to come out on top. Adults who had the most memorable, fun childhood. I want my kids to, to have, have the, the, the most they can have as kids growing up. The best childhood. The most memories. The most fun. And, and by the way, these first two are not... Uh, they're not technically or inherently sinful, although it's not far from there. And on the first one, the reason I say that is I still haven't found a scripture that says be better than everyone else at anything except the moral law of God and outdoing one another and showing love. That's one. The competitive spirit that we have as Americans, if you're not first, you're last. That's really not in the Word of God. It's not. And that's hard for us to swallow. Uh, the most memorable, fun childhood. Not, not bad or wrong unless it gets in the way of something. Unless it interferes with raising our children to love God with all their heart, soul, might. Number three. Adults with the best jobs and finances. This is the American dream. This is success. I want my, I want my kids to do well in life and have the best things that life has to offer. Great job. You know, make good money, know how to manage it, do well, be successful. I mean, that's, that is so natural for us to want for our children. 
Number four, passionate. Do I want them to be a passionate and faithful Christian? The eternal value of the first three, I don't know. I'm getting a little feedback with my mic, David. I don't know the eternal value in the first three. I, our children need a healthy childhood. They need a loving childhood. They need to be loved uh, and be safe and be healthy. They need to grow up in the Lord, though, don't they? They need to be adults who are passionate about their walk with God. That's what they need. That's what we want. That's what our, when your kids are adults, by the way, if they're at home, when they're adults, that's what you will want. I believe that's what you will want. And so home is the first and most important thing we can do to raise our kids to be passionate and faithful Christians. Home is number one. Home devotionals let our kids have to see our faith at home somehow. They have to see it. And if God is number one and we say he's number one and he's not number one at home, that's a problem. And our kids will struggle. That could be the thing they stumble over and they turn from God over. But if we say God's number one, it has to look like he is at home. Fathers, God will hold you primarily responsible. As fathers, we are the heads of our household. And that comes from God. That's, we didn't learn that in our culture. We learned that from Almighty God. And God held Adam responsible for the sin in the garden first. He questioned him first, even though he didn't sin first. You might argue that, that gets the whole other topic. But Eve ate first. We do know that. And she gave to Adam. But God questions Adam first, holds him responsible. He gave the instructions not to eat to Adam and not directly to Eve. And so fathers, we need to be, uh, we need to step up to the plate whether, whether our, the mothers do or not. Fathers, we need to. And mothers, whether there's a father in the home or not, the greatest thing you can do is lead your children spiritually. Show them an example. Teach them. Train them. Help them. Invest in them spiritually. Support your children also. Now, we, I've been talking about home, but with church opportunities, and I really hold up Bible class, support your children. Support them. It's the most important thing. And I want to close talking with all of us adults. Um, if you've been serving, helping our children grow in the knowledge of God, thank you. Because uh, serving with our children, may you may feel like that's a thankless job. You may feel like no one appreciates it. But thank you. Great job. I cannot think of a more important thing you can do than help children grow in the Lord. Amen. I can't think of anything more important. Adults encourage our kids. A church without young people is discouraging and it has a sad future. And if you've never seen a congregation without children, it is discouraging and that congregation has a sad future unless something changes. And so be thankful. If our kids are rowdy sometimes, um, I'm not saying turn them loose and crank up, crank up the volume. I'm just saying be thankful. Be thankful. Encourage them. Encourage them. And may we have this attitude. I want to close with this scripture. Psalm 34, 11. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. David writes that about God's people. But it applies to what we're talking about. May we have the attitude, all of us, children, come. I'll teach you. I will help you. How can I help teach you to love God and grow in his favor? We're going to sing a song of encouragement this morning. You may have something that's been weighing on your heart that uh, you would like us to stop and pray for you about. We'd love to do that. There may be... Someone here today, you've never given your life to Christ. For whatever reason, you've put that off. And there's no reason, there's no good reason that you have to keep waiting. If, if we can help you become a child of God this morning, let us do that. If you have a need, please come while we stand in sin.